Okay, well, let me just say, uh, welcome everyone. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, very excited to have another iCoder member meeting. Uh, we've got so much exciting stuff on the hook for the fall. Uh, we're planning Cyber Week, which is going to be kicking off first week of November. So stay tuned for more on that. Our ODR forum meeting is going to be happening in, in uh, Bangalore in March. So there's information that's going to be coming out soon on that. But I'm very delighted today to have as our guest, uh, Lisa, here to talk about uh, Lightning Law, which is one of the most exciting uh, websites I've come across in the last year. So, um, uh, Lisa, can I well. let me hand it over to you and, and you can uh, you can tell us about what you're working on. Um, so, uh, first of all, thank you all. And if it's OK, I, I would love to ask you some questions to start things off. First, um, let me let you know that GP from my team is here. And I think that Deneen, um, GP, do you want to ping Deneen and tell her to come? I know uh, she was asking whether she should or not, but I think it'd be great for her to, to participate. Sure. So Deneen is one of my co-founders. Um, so cool. Uh, so um, how many people here are currently mediating? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so lots of you. So, um, what is the, uh, have you ever had a disastrous mediation? Yeah, <laughs> Lynn says no. Yes, Brad says yes. So I come from the attorney standpoint. Uh, so I've been an attorney for 22 years. Um, and I think that there are a lot of founders who start, a, start like, you know, a company and then they want to tell all the investors like, it's all I do. I do 100% this. I'm really proud to say it's not all I do. I think it's really important that I'm also still in the trenches. Yesterday, I was in an all day, was that yesterday, Tuesday, it felt like two days. I was in an all day mediation all day long. So I think it's really important. I've, I've scaled it down a lot, but I, I want to keep my toe in there and I want to know what's happening and I want to make sure that there's an opportunity to make it better. So um, I'm going to tell you uh, two things that I hate, and maybe you guys can tell me two things you hate, and then let's take um, a look at a couple things. Um, one thing that I hate is I hate getting a text that says, um, oh, we're, you know, we're ready for you. You can, you know, turn things on again, or um, just text my assistant when you're ready for me to come in and hear the blah, blah, blah. So... That's one thing I hate. Um, the worst mediations I've ever had. Uh, one was where the uh, defense attorney offered one dollar. That was it. My clients travel from across the United States. They stayed in a hotel, um, and the uh, defense offered one dollar. And then afterwards, I said this was not a good faith mediation, and I asked our mediator to get behind me with that. It was a federal court case. I, I'm going to be saying, you know, we're going to be telling the judge it was not in good faith. Can we get a declaration from you? Answer, no, I need to stay neutral. Um, and then the third thing that uh, has plagued me twice is, and maybe I'm just dealt some of my cases are really long and complex, go into the night, multiple parties, and I have twice had mediators bring the wrong number into the room. And that both times that has drawn the litigation out until at least once we're on the courthouse steps. Um, so set the exact wrong expectation or say something offensive, un, you know, not meaning to. So, okay, now I'm gonna boot it over to, to someone else to tell me, and it can be about an attorney, by the way. <laughs> um, you know, like what what you hate or dislike, or uh, what will tank a mediation, in your opinion? I got a story. I had two guys that came in. It was a used car purchase, and uh, they had almost come to blows. I think on the site of the used car lot, um, and they came to the mediation. They each brought their wives. And their wives sat there in the room with their arms crossed, just shooting daggers at each other. And these guys would not back down. And it just got hotter and hotter and hotter. And eventually they stood up and they were they were ready to beat the crap out of each other. And I was really rattled. I was not I'm not used to dealing with this kind of violence. So eventually I, I, I said, why don't we caucus? So we caucused a little bit. And then I asked if 
the wives would be willing to step out. And then we had a conversation and then things cooled down a little bit. So there was a lot of posturing for the wives, but that was the scared, the most scared I've ever been in a mediation. I was really worried it was going to turn into a fight. I literally was standing between these guys saying, don't punch me. I wear glasses, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. yeah so. Um, uh, thanks for sharing that, Colin. Anyone else want to share a I, I became aware at one point in a mediation, and I'm not taking on cases right now, but this, so this was maybe three years ago, that I already had kind of a weird spidey sense about this dude in the mediation, and I didn't feel entirely safe, and I couldn't quite put my finger on it. And then at one point, I realized he, he was concealing a gun, and I thought, is he gonna, what's he gonna do with that? And I didn't really know what to do and I definitely didn't feel safe. Wow, I had, I, I, so by the way, Janine is one of my co-founders. She is a current working stenographer and has done that for over 30 years. Um, and uh, anyway, I was telling her recently that I had a gun pulled on me in a deposition in Texas. So yeah, it gets really down and dirty, but hey, here's a beautiful thing now we're online. It's really hard to shoot somebody through the computer. And uh, we can also, we also have these tools where we can make, we can make, I don't know. I think what we've been doing is we've been using Zoom and we've been using WebEx and we've been using Teams. And these are business tools. They're not curated and built for attorneys. So, um, Lightning Law came out of my own frustrations as an attorney. I was really frustrated. Um, this is gonna sound ridiculous. I always I wish I had a better way to tell this story. It was 2017, um, I was going through a divorce and I wanted to be with my kids more. So that's the heartfelt part of the story. Um, I was tired of flying to France to uh, depose Airbus engineers. <laughs> because really when you've seen one French conference room for 12 hours, you've seen them all. So I just tried to start hacking together Zoom and um, Dropbox to try to do it over remotely. But with my work, which is plane crashes, that's you know huge flight manuals, lots of different documents. I've got videos of planes moving around. It just wasn't gonna happen. So I started to create the software and that led me to meet Deneen, I grabbed my friend from 20 years who's still at Microsoft to be our CTO. And my concept was initially to build for depositions. And then the pandemic started and it became really crystal clear that everybody was barred from the courtrooms. We needed a tool for everyone. Um, right before that, we had a max crash in Africa. So I flew to Africa to uh, sign up clients. And as I was running around with them, trying to get to probate court on buses for hours and hours, only to get there and find court clothes, it was just another light bulb that everybody needs to be able to get to court, talk to mediators, talk to their lawyers, all these legal proceedings, they can happen online. And all those tools that you're using as a mediator online, where you're asking someone to sign your mediation agreement, where you're asking, not your mediation agreement, your agreement to mediate, where you're asking people to, you know, show a document to you, but not to someone else. Um, all those tools are tools that everyone's going to be using in legal proceedings. They're just lawyer, judge, mediator tools. So that's really what Lightning Law is. Um, so we have two products right now, but we're not stopping there. So the first product we created was attorney client. So you can meet with your attorney and half your screen is video and half your screen are your documents and your workflow that you're working in. And all of it is, is really stitched together in the back with data so that we can grab all the data you want from there. Um, so um, that's probably not as interesting to you as the online dispute resolution product that we have as well. So I'll show that to you and kind of talk you through it, but we're building depositions. We are building for arbitrations. 
We've got judges who want it for hearings. And I really see it as sort of Shopify for legal professionals, a way to bring down the cost of legal services. And, you know, when you think about like the life cycle of, let's just take a personal injury case. If there's a platform I can go to where there's a, there's a service where I can obtain medical records, I can obtain the medical records there, I get it in Lightning Law. Then those same medical records, I'm gonna to wanna to use them for sharing with my client, talking to an expert, going, you know, if I'm gonna file something, I might need them. I'm gonna use them in my deposition, I'm gonna use them in the hearing, all this jumping back and forth from all these different places, it's not useful. So, so if you folks are ready for me to share my screen or if anybody has any questions at all, Let's do it. Okay. So let's go here and share screen. Okay. So um, we live, hopefully you guys can see this. Can you see Lightning Law, your, your one end-to-end -end platform? Yeah, getting some nods. Okay, good. So this is where we live. We live at lightning.law. And you can either sign up as an attorney or a mediator or schedule a demo. So that's all of that. Once you have your subscription and the first month is free, by the way, um, then you just hit sign in. So I'm gonna sign in. I have a mediator profile on here, but I'm not a mediator. So um, here's my profile. So the first thing you're gonna be prompted to do is to create this profile. Um, so before that, I'll tell you that we are very inexpensive. Uh, we are for the mediator base is $50 a month. Um, the next level up is 65 and then the most expensive is $80 a month. Um, and the reason that we can afford to charge that is because we're not just for online dispute resolution. We're selling to attorneys, we're selling to stenographers, we're sort of like this big marketplace. So as an, uh, here is, um, oops, I'm gonna go to, um, well, let's just do it like this. I'm gonna go to mediations, then my profile will look different. So this could also be used by an attorney who's also a mediator. So here's my profile. And uh, I um, have payment information in here so that I can pay for the mediation. If I am a mediator, I will have payout information so I can get paid on the platform. Uh, we use Stripe, so there is a 2.9% credit card transaction fee involved, uh, but the concept is that you should be able to get paid immediately. So I go to uh, my meetings and I upload a picture, everybody uploads a picture, and here's my mediation. So I can create a new mediation. So I'm going to say, um, oh, it says I don't have a mediator subscription. That's why it's doing this. All right, let me see if I have a mediator subscription over here. I always forget which one. All right, let's look at this one. Um, let me cancel out of here. Okay, I'm going to sign out. Sign in and it's under lightning law. Okay, I should really use a different picture for each of my um, personalities. Okay, so um, here is my profile, my PM information. Um, we have mediator profile information as well. Uh, we found that adding a little bit about yourself or if you have an introduction you want people to read, um, you can keep this blank or fill information in. The more information, the more photographs of people, the more that they can relate, um, it becomes more personable and that helps us to emulate the real experience. So this is the payout information for if you want to get paid immediately for your mediations. So what I'll do is I will create a new mediation 
and I'll put in the case name, the cause number. This is when the mediation is going to occur. And then I can set a mediation upload deadline. So if I want the parties to upload things a week before, it will send a reminder to them um, a week before, a few days before the deadline. Um, and then if they haven't uploaded anything before the mediation, they'll get another reminder. You can uh, set this expectation for your calendar, full day, half day, multiple days. We are aiming to connect with Outlook so that it will then block that information off for you. The cause number uh, is not yet very useful, but soon we hope it will be. And here's why. We know that mediators want to know what happens in the case. So if you're telling someone you should settle this case, here are the risks involved. If you go to trial, blah, blah, blah. It's really helpful and informative for the mediator to be able to know, okay, it did, the case did go to trial. So you will then, um, version two, you'll get an update and you'll be told, here's what happened, you know. Wouldn't you like to know as a mediator how close your recommendations are to, to reality, what would really happen? Also, some mediators seem to wanna see the, what's in the docket, what's been filed. So if we can connect with PACER, that'd be helpful. This is your private summary where you can fill out, you know, got a call from so-and-so, these are the main issues, blah, blah, blah. Here's our status. So your mediation will be open when you create it. It's either then in progress, meaning it's gonna keep going, you keep working on it. It's resolved or it's unresolved. Unresolved is like, it's never gonna work. Even if these people call me back, I'm telling them, don't call me. So after that, you uh, create your, you create it. Um, so let me take you to one I've created here. So here's all that information we just talked about. And then we just add in the plaintiffs. So here I can um, add in the people that will be in the plaintiff's room and I can keep adding as many plaintiffs um, and you can use respondent petitioner. Um, if it's family law, but uh, you say this person is an attorney or they're a client or they're an insurer or they're other, different uh, people are identified in the actual video. So you always know who you're talking to. You just put their email address in. So I could say, and then add them. And then there he is, I can remove them and I save that. And then I go to, I'm waiting. Then I go to the defendant's room and I do the same thing. So I can add all these different folks myself. Then we move on to payment. So if you put a deposit that's required here, uh, your mediation won't start at all. Nothing can happen until that deposit has been paid. You could also indicate if you want a cancellation fee and you can indicate your hourly rate. So for total billable hours, this is after the mediation you put in. I worked on this for eight hours. Um, you can put your billing notes, which will then be sent to the participants. And here's your split. You can um, add as many parties as you want. You can split it however, however you want. Uh, is this, sometimes I get in the weeds here. Is everyone tracking here? Is it relevant? Okay, good. So then we move on to documents. Um, there's a couple things you can do with documents here. I can upload documents. So if I'm going to upload a document, I just select these files from anywhere. My firm likes to use Citrix share file, but you could have shortcuts to any cloud you want or your desktop or whatever. You can share anything except if you're sharing a movie, it needs to be an MP4. And each document should be no larger than two gigabytes. You also can keep templates here. So you can upload templates that just live on Lightning Law if you have a, a fee agreement or whatever so that you don't have to go elsewhere for it. So once you, um, let's see, let's pretend I'm gonna select this, I'll attach it. Then once I've uploaded my documents, now I'm going to decide, I'm going to move you guys over here, and I'm going to decide what to do with them. 
So I, I go to my action dots and I share. I can share with just the plaintiff. I can share with just the defendant. I can share with all participants. I can say, I don't want this person to see it. So there's a lot of selectivity here. If I, in, if I indicated that it's a mediation agreement, then it will be sent through our DocuSign integration so that folks can sign it via DocuSign. Uh, when they sign via DocuSign, we keep everything here. So you don't have to jump off to DocuSign, et cetera. Um, so here's one that I sent through DocuSign and I can see that one of four people signed it. So I can also track whether it's been signed or not. So these are all the documents in general. These are the documents the plaintiff uploaded, the defendant uploaded, my documents. I can see like if the defendant uploads a document, I'll be able to see who they shared it with. And um, that's these little faces here, who it was shared with and who owns that document. <clears throat> okay, so the documents have been uploaded. I'm on track, I'm excited to mediate this case. I have everything I need and I'm gonna prepare. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start annotating and highlighting. So I'm going to open it up and hit annotate. And as you can see here, my annotations are entirely private to me. No one else gets to see them. So every time I move you guys around, you're like a little black spot for you, I think. So if you see that, that's all it is. Okay, so here's my, um, so one of the parties has uploaded this jury verdict. And maybe I don't want to read the whole thing. So I'm just going to hit my magnifying glass and I'm going to search the document. Let's see, their case invo involves a, a Ford. Is this, is this a Ford document? Nope, no, res oh, I spelled it wrong. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, oh, nope, just Crawford, that's where. So I can search this document. I don't need to maybe read the whole thing closely. I can also highlight it. I can add comments. So let's say I'm gonna comment on this document and I'm gonna say, um, ask defense counsel about this issue and save it. So I'm preparing for the mediation, doing all the stuff you would do on paper, I assume. Um, and uh, I'm just gonna select another file here. Let's say download and we'll look at, Uh, there we go. All right. Um, oh, looks like I have something here for you guys to see already. Okay, so let's take a look at this. This is a video. More and more video. I mean, more and more things are on video whether it's testimony from a witness or an incident. So here's a video. I can play this video um, and I can annotate the video. So this is a spot that I might wanna come back to um, and say, um, uh, tires, tire looks bald, whatever I wanna say. Um, so all these annotations are really useful because once I start my mediation, I'm going to have them right there, right next to the video. So let's go to the conference room now. Here's my conference room. The default layout that was created is based upon who I invited. I invited plaintiffs and I invited a defendant. There's a breakout room for each party. If I'd added multiple parties, we'd have multiple breakout rooms. Um, I also probably created this extra room. Um, let me show you how to do that. Uh, you um, just hit add room and then you can move people around. So some mediators like to start with everybody in the same room. So I'm dragging everybody into that same room to start with. Um, so once everybody and once you've set this all up, got people where you want, 
then you're gonna send your invitations. So you hit send invitations. Everybody gets an email. So this is super familiar because it probably sounds a lot like Zoom, but it's not like Zoom because we've seen Zoom bombings. We've seen you know unauthorized use of Zoom, the wrong people in the Zoom meeting. This is dual factor authentication. So when they get the email, they have to provide the same email address in the system that you use to invite them. They need to then go to that email and verify with a verification code, that's me. And then they need to go in and create a password. And then they need to go in and it's not required, but it feels like a third piece of security to have them upload a picture. So that when you look at the picture that they uploaded, it looks like the picture of the person who you're talking to. Security is really important because we're dealing with confidential documents. Sometimes it could be ITAR or EAR documents that can't even go out of the country. So and that's why we built it this way. And we definitely get flack from people who say, well, when I do mediations on Zoom, my people can just click and they're in. And uh, this is a different, this is specifically for legal proceedings. They are confidential. They're, they involve, you, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here. It's sensitive stuff. So, okay. Um, access permissions is when someone's asking for access and you didn't invite them, there's some issue, you'll get a pop-up there. So I'm gonna join my virtual meeting. So let me turn my video off here. I'm gonna stop my video. Um, so I'll join this virtual meeting. Um, oops, I didn't need to do that yet. I'm gonna start my video. Uh, so I forgot that actually what I should do is, Deneen, I'm gonna invite you to this meeting. So I just go back, so I have two tabs here. I can go back to this other tab and I can say, okay, I'm gonna add another plaintiff. I'm gonna edit the party. I'm gonna add, um, let me add Deneen. At lightning.law, and I'll also add GP. And you may wonder why are you GPHLP? GP at lightning. Uh, it's Juliet Golf Hotel Lima Papa. Juliet Golf Hotel. Hotel. Lima. Yep. Thank you. Okay. So I had to add these guys because I can't get into a room unless there's an attorney in it. That's the way we've created the system. Hmm. So, um, all right. So now I'm going to go to my mediation room and I'm going to refresh this because I just added some participants. Okay. So uh, that means that GP and Deneen, you should go log on so I can show everyone the video function at some point. Um, okay, so this is, this is my view as the mediator. It's totally unique to me. Nobody can see if I'm looking at my disclosure to NHTSA, right? I'm the only person who can see that. Nobody can see um, my you know, notes on my jury verdict form that I made. Totally unique to me. We're not share screen, we're not sending a file. And uh, the next thing I have is I can still share to more people. So let's say I did forgot to share to somebody. I can, I can do that here. Um, my participants, once they join, I'll see them here. Documents that are shared with me are in this tab. And here are the demands and offers. You'll probably recognize that this 100% came out of my own bad experience, but um, if I'm in the room for V, this room for the plaintiff, I can make a demand. Um, so what happens is, and maybe let's see if I have anybody in there. If GP, are you um, are you in the meeting yet? I'm uh, signing up. For okay, this good. One. And or Deneen, I, I mean, I would see you in participants, but let me know when you're close so I can um, go in there. So uh, what happens is. I'm in the room for a certain party, and I want that party um, to communicate their demand or offer with me. 
they can either choose to put it here in this written place. So if the attorney does it here, let's say they want $500,000 and an apology. Um, if the attorney were to type that, then I don't need the attorney to confirm it, but I can't present it until I get to the other room. So nobody else sees it. So this is what it starts to look like. Um, so then I'm ready to go into the other room for C and present this demand. So I try to go into the room for C, but first I'm going to share my sound with you so you can hear. Okay, so I try to go into the room for C. And nobody's answering. Um, so I'm going to try to bypass it. it says entry is not allowed to room C if an attorney is not present. Well, let's see if I can go into this room. Nope, there's no attorney in that room yet. So that's, you know, the basic functionality. Um, and then when I go to that other room, I can, you know, create the offer. They go back and forth. So it looks like a chat. And we also show you the delta. So you can start looking at the delta, what times these things happen. Um, so while Deneen and GP get on, we'll do our propose agreement. We've now gotten to the end of the mediation and, and we've made progress. We're gonna have a final agreement. And this is where the parties literally draft it. So they start their agreement. Um, oh, so Deneen has turned her video off, but she's in. So let me show you. Let me turn my video off. And I will knock. You gotta stop doing that because my dog is going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I will turn my off. And I didn't think about that. Okay, um, stop sharing sound. Okay, so I'm gonna bypass it. It's checking for an attorney, and it still says there's no one in there. All right, let me see. One more time. No. Nope. They're not there yet. Okay. So this is where you draft your proposal and you say we have agreed to resolve the case for a um, hundred thousand dollars. And uh, then I'm going to save that and it gets sent over. It's proposed over. The next party sees it. They can track any changes. And then as the mediator, I can generate the final settlement agreement just automates it, sticks it all in there, and they can sign um, via DocuSign. So um, I'm just going to check my chat here. Um, oh, and probably, so sometimes Zoom, spite, Zoom fights with this, so that might be why, but let me just try to bypass it one more time. Huh. So GP is not in there, neither is Deneen, but um, anyway. I'm hopping on now. I'm mopping on. Oh, you are? Okay, good. Let's try it. Not yet. Nope. Okay, I don't see you there yet. Oh, the resources are conflicting right now. I didn't have this problem yesterday, but anyway, so Teams is fighting with Zoom. I mean, Zoom is fighting with, um, if you're at, yeah, if your webcam is active in one, it's not. Anyway, take my word for it. The um, video is better than Zoom and Teams, and so is the audio. So that's um, that's all of it. The last thing that happens is that you, as a mediator, you would go, you would leave the mediation. When you leave the mediation, you indicate whether it's resolved or still open and pending, and then we give you the information you need to keep working on it, so you know exactly where you left off, and you know the phone numbers, you know all of that.
Um, so you'd just go back to your other tab and you would go back to payment, input your billable hours, save, and it will generate the invoices for you. Um, that's it. I'll stop share. Wow, so cool. Man, there's a million innovative things in here. This is really, really great. Thank you for sharing that. I have never seen any uh, platform that allows for annotation of videos. And I'm wondering, you know, if that you said that came out of your experience with airline crashes. I mean, is that a common thing in those kinds of cases to have video that need to be annotated by multiple parties? Absolutely. And I, I didn't um, I didn't show you this, but that um, video annotation tool also allows us to change the speed at which you're playing it. So you can slow it down or speed mm -hmm. it up. You can zoom in. Absolutely. So I had a helicopter crash near the Space Needle. Mm. And there's just video everywhere now. So we were able, you know, crashes are caught on video now. So, wow. Yeah. Amazing. Remember like Amazing. Dr. Zhao, right? Dr. Zhao is being pulled off that airplane. United. Being videotaped by another passenger. And then yeah. you're going to want to slow it down to see all the nitty gritties. Wow. Fascinating. Fascinating. Yeah. And I think the annotation that everybody can do on all the exhibits that have been uploaded and you can indicate who, what is shared with who, and then your annotations are only visible to you and it's all previewed right in the browser. I think that's really, really impressive. I, I think that that's a great, great functionality, but I'm curious to hear the thoughts of others as well. You know, there's a lot of innovative stuff in the platform that I don't think we've seen in other ODR systems. And I think this is because you're so comfortable with the legal side of it you know i think a lot of this stuff is very focused on the negotiation mediation side but graham did i see your hand did you have something you wanted you to did say? see my hand first of all before, i've got a question lisa before i do i just want to share that uh, i'm really going to remember this one uh, out of all of the uh, icoda meetings i'm really going to remember it but the reason is because you know when something happens some tragedy you always say, I remember where, and while you've been speaking, I will, I think it was about 10 minutes ago, I'm getting told that the Queen has passed away. Oh, wow. I'm so sorry. That's sorry, the Graham. But, uh, but at anyway, anyway, uh, it, it, it was uh, on the cards all day, actually, because the family had been going up there. Um, but I really love that, uh, what you're showing, and I'm, it's a bit hard to see on the screen. Um, I couldn't expand it, and so I'll book myself in. I see on your website you can book in for a, a demo. Um, level of facilities, I have a question. At the top on the menu bar, you've got for attorneys and you've got for mediators. What you don't have, and you might think about, is for people in dispute. So my question is about your marketing. I can see yeah. that you're marketing to people who, for whom it can be greatly helpful when they're conducting mediations. Um, but of course, we always have the problem, particularly if we're approached by one side party in dispute of having to persuade the other party uh, to go along with mediations. I'm wondering if you had any thoughts about how you about the marketing of this so that the, the, the people in dispute are already bought into wanting to use it. Really great point. And I, I've i only talked to one mediator so far who works directly with unrepresented people. Is that the world you're describing? Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. that Is that the world you're describing? Like when you work directly with two unrepresented people as a mediator, where it's not marketing to attorneys, it's marketing to... Yeah, so um, the bulk of the mediations in the UK would be arranged by mediation organizations. Um, and there is a, usually by lawyers, um, I must say the bulk of them, the, the lawyer one, the lawyer mediated ones tend to come already with both parties represented and their attorneys and lawyers choosing and selecting a mediator but work that I do I specialize in shareholder disputes between the owners of business and they come to me usually not through lawyers and of course there's a whole wealth of other mediations out there where people are not represented um, but my point is really more general uh, about the marketing because obviously if the, if, the, if the clients aren't going to want to use it a bit concerned about the confidentiality and oh, it seems a bit odd um 
but it is very impressive. Yeah, so um, pain point. Very impressive. I'm just wondering, have you, have you uh, looked at how to overcome that, if you like? So, so. Um, that's such a good question. And it's really something that has been at the top of my mind lately because I'm a good attorney. And uh, through the process of two years, I've become pretty good at designing and, and leading a team to build software. But I'm terrible, just terrible at marketing software. It's not... I, I'm with you on that. You're doing yeah, a great right? job. I don't know what you're talking about. You're marketing <laughs> software right now. You're doing yeah, fantastic. Know, but it's something that you need to do on a big scale and, you know, in everybody's feed all the time and you know, with all the right contracts. It's just not, it's not me. And it also feels, this is part of the thing that feels weird. It's like being a salesperson. I think there's a lot of fluff that you have to say, but when you're an attorney, you're trained to be so honest and forthright with the tribunal and just sometimes it just goes a little so um so actually i'm looking for the right team member to come along and help who has marketing experience who's taken a who's taken a company to you know that next level through marketing so if anybody knows anybody i'm i also would prefer that someone have um, a legal background um care about pro bono the big picture so so that's one of um, the things I'm working on. And uh, a lot of mediators and lawyers would love the ability to connect with clients um, and get work. Um, <laughs> thank you, Maris. Um, uh, and oh. I would love to help help with that. I see that, um, like first, in, my big pain point as a lawyer is I wanna schedule a mediation with a mediator. I don't know their schedule. It's tons of calls back and forth and in a perfect world, there'd be some calendar sharing. Mm -hmm. Once there's some interest, I think the next step is an attorney says, ping somebody who maybe has a profile on the platform. I'd like to use you. Can you share your calendar with me and my colleague? Not like the details, but like what's blacked out, what's available. Mm -hmm. Cut that down. Yeah, I would look at Calendly or simply Book Me. They have APIs for that, and it is quite complicated with time zones and all of that. So, and yeah. iCal mm -hmm. and Apple and Google Calendar and Outlook. So, looking to a third-party service to provide that functionality, but it is becoming more and more common. And I do understand what you're saying about software sales. I'm a non-lawyer, and I do selling all the time. So maybe uh, you know I'm more sympathetic to it. But there are a lot of people within iCoder. You know, I, I had a friend, uh, Tom Fee, who used to work at the National Institute for Dispute Resolution. And Tom said to me very early in my career, Colin, if you're selling something you don't believe in, that's the hardest job in the world. But if you're selling something you believe in, sales is actually pretty easy. And yeah. I do feel that way. And your product is great. And uh, the thing is, it's built from real expertise. And there's a lot of lawyers out there that couldn't, you know, code their way out of a paper bag. I mean, they don't even know how to get a soft a computer to do anything. So if they can find this tool and it meets the needs that they have, you know, it's going to be an easy sale. So I think hopefully you'll find somebody within the iCoder world, you know, who can help you out in that way. I think uh, you've got a lot of passionate people here uh, and this is squarely in the realm where we work. So we'll put the APB out to the iCoder Thank folks you. and see if we can find you somebody. Um, Jeff, you. did you have something you wanted to say? Oh, I thought I saw Jeff's finger, but maybe I'm wrong. Any other comments, feedback, questions for Elisa about the platform? How many, is, is, is this beta or how many users do you have? What kind of feedback are you getting, Elisa? Um, we basically, I think we're about four weeks into being up and selling, yes. Mm -hmm. So I would, um, I check the user, we're growing a couple every day, I would say. Of course, I'm addicted to checking, you know, to see how many. Um, the I think the feedback so far has been great. It's been, uh, we recently were invited by the National Center for State Courts to go to the judges conference um, in Philadelphia. So we went and I was like, what do we, we don't have anything to provide to them. You know, we just have these, this is what we're doing for mediators and attorneys. And they were all over it. They were like, you know, Thompson Reuters has this product called Case Center. It's really difficult to use, especially for pro se, especially for land, you know, landlord tenant stuff. This is simple. It's kind of, we kind of designed it as somewhat like Outlook, which all of us are using probably. So, um, so the stress right now is 
time to get it to the people with the products we have. Um, you're the first group of mediators that have seen this product in its entirety and it's, you know, being up. So that's great. Well, you do got to beat the drum relentlessly. I really like the, the, the interfacing is very clear. I mean, anybody who's used mm -hmm. modern web apps, they can understand how that operates. And I like the room metaphor too, where you can drag around the rooms and you sort of have a conference center and you create all of that. I think that works very well. So it means that there's not going to be that steep a learning curve, which is key. Because sometimes when people get into yeah. a new software product, they're like, now, what do I do? Where do I click? Um, you know, I do urge you to create, like this video is great, but the more videos you can have of yourself recording, using the tool, the better. Because right. uh, people love to watch YouTube videos to figure out, oh, okay, now I see how to do that. Oh, okay, got it. That's a, yeah. that's a yes. Right now it's, um, it's a uh, bandwidth. So right now we're, um, you know, trying to change boards like meeting to hearing for, right. you know, for judges, which is so exciting. The concept um, is, you know, what if you could go to court on your cell phone? What if you could <clears throat> get justice anywhere? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there is a it, pain point that any of you have that you feel like this just doesn't speak to? <laughs> what does everybody think? Lynn, please. Um, the having to have an attorney in each of, of the rooms and, and the whole concept of it being attorney focused, I think uh, is going to leave a lot of this in the dust. So you would like um, the you would like the product to have one where you don't need an attorney. It's just parties. Got yeah, it. Exactly. And does everyone stay in the same room for that? Not necessarily. I mean, you do have caucus, but uh, yeah. So, so there's different rooms, but you can move around. So when you're saying a different product, you mean the same platform, except that you would give access simply to parties without attorneys. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, that's the whole thing. It's just, we keep sort of, um, I don't know, regurgitating is not the right word, but it's all on the platform. Just all these different products in the same place. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't need to, I mean, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. The product is there and you simply open it to other users. Exactly. Yeah. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. Did you have something you wanted to say? Uh, no. Nah. Hi, Alicia. How are you? Uh, I'm why good. don't we meet up for lunch and talk? Since yes, yeah, we should meet up for lunch. Soon. We 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 don't live too far away, so. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Yeah, I'll say another experience I've had with ODR is uh, generic tools oftentimes have a harder time getting traction than tools that have been really made specific for um, individual case types. Now, I think it'd be really easy for your platform, you know, to build a version, a custom, customized version for landlord tenant case. That's what we were talking about with Lynn, because he's doing a lot of these eviction cases now. Mm. So I think your platform is great because it's a blank page. You could use it for anything. I mean, when you were doing the video annotation, and you put up that car crash, I was like, aha, I, I suddenly understand how this would work for an insurance caseload or how this could work for an air, you know, like a helicopter mm -hmm. caseload because you have that tool. But uh, maybe creating a version of the platform that says, hey, this is optimized for these kinds of cases. And we've structured it in a certain way. I know Bob's done a lot of that on his platform, you know, building different flows for different kinds of cases. We've that's done that awesome. at ODR.com, but it wouldn't be that much more work. As you say, changing from case to hearing, that's one example, like where it's more yes. of a judicial application, but that's something that, to think about. That is a great, that is great input for family law. Um, we have not, we've designed, but not created the whole, you know, with family law, you're dealing with these different spreadsheets and people have things on different rows and columns and drives people nuts. So sure. um, we've been trying to simplify that. Um, and definitely, so landlord tenant, the National Center for State Courts has this big push. They got this huge grant to try to, like if you go to small claims court, or if you go to, you know, in some in some counties, your dispute is worth less than 50,000, you're pushed into arbitration, but if that's not happening, or mediation, you're not being pushed into mediation with landlord tenant, 
And that's what should be happening because there's so many, so many, uh, and so many more. So, um, so that's why we started talking to the courts initially. We would love to, I would love to talk to you, Lynn, about your thoughts on landlord tenant and, you know, I would think video would be helpful there because you might take a video of, I don't know, the condition that you're complaining about, or you certainly would want to be able to upload documents showing that you lost your job or. Or the lease. Yeah. The lease, yeah. This is the original agreement. This is how much was supposed to be paid. Now, as I see your, uh, your hands up. What did you want to say? Yes, sorry if I missed that, Elisa. Is there any assistance for troubleshooting in case uh, any user has problem with the platform and needs assistance on the spot? GP, do you want to speak to that? I, yeah. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? You kind of cut out. He was asking what uh, if there's any assistance, if somebody needs help on the platform to troubleshoot it. Oh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah. That's right. um, but and, it's a uh, chat or a phone call. And chat, and phone call, you can send an email as well. Great. And so this, this is highlighted in the marketing, I believe. Yes. Because that, that puts uh, users, potential users in comfort as to well, if I don't make it, what happens? Okay. And, and I have uh, a silly question. Sorry. <laughs> Why lightning law? Oh, great question. Um, because it's lightening the burden on our courts. Um, it's lightning speed. Uh, yeah, you know, light is a pretty beautiful metaphor for life and justice. So yes, I love your question. I actually um, thought of the name. Um, my husband's father passed away during COVID and uh, we had a couldn't do the normal stuff. So we had a meeting with his three older sisters and all of us at our house. And his father always loved lightning storms and this incredible lightning storm came over so loud and crazy wow. and vibrant. And it was just, and he actually designed real estate software. So it's just this. Uh, he, he gave you a sign of the appreciation. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Elisa. Thank you. Thank you all for all of your time. I really appreciate it. If you want to go up and sign up for a demo, um, then you'll get GP. He will slowly and methodically take you through, or Deneen. Um, and if you want to sign up for a month and try it out for a month and then quit, you can do that too. Hopefully, you'll be addicted. Fantastic. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. Kudos to you guys for the great work. I think this is an amazing platform and uh, I think the sky's the limit. So uh, just keep at the sales. It's only been four weeks, you know, it takes yeah. a long time to bash down these walls, but uh, it seems inevitable to me that all of this work is going to move online and thank you've done you. a great job thinking yeah. through the foundations. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of people moving in online and there's a lot of room for all kinds of innovation and growth. Thank you all for all the work that you do every day helping people to resolve their disputes and move on with their lives. All right, fantastic. Any other comments, questions? No. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining in. Thank you again, Elisa. Thank you, GP. Um, it was thank great you. to meet you. Keep up the good work and, uh, and let us know if there's anything we can do. Hopefully we'll, in the iCoder community, we'll find you your sales guy, Elisa. I like it. No, the, the right persons like can sell all the stuff, not just online dispute resolution, which is huge. Right. And maybe I should think about it like that. Maybe we should have some per one person for online dispute, one person for lawyers, one person for the judges. Maybe that's the right way to look at it. But well, you can do that later when the millions are rolling in. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, right. Okay. Take care, everybody. Thank Be you. well. Thanks, Colin. Have a good day. Take care, everyone. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye.